Hello everyone and welcome to Network Playroom. In this video we're going to have a quick overview of the OSPF link state database and a short discussion about the LSA types. And then we'll go over the LSA header. So the link state database is really the bread and butter of OSPF. All valid LSAs received by a router are stored in the link state database. So the LSAs describe the full topology of the area. And because each router in an area calculates its shortest path three from this database, it is imperative that all databases are identical in an area. So there are several different types of LSAs. And I'll list them on the screen here and describe them briefly. We'll look at each LSA in more detail in a separate video later on. So first, let me just write down the type code. Oops. And then the description or name of the LSA. So first we have router LSA. And this describes its own interfaces and attached networks. And then we have number two, which is the network LSA. Uh, the network LSA is generated by the designated router to describe all routers connected to that network segment. And then number three is the network summary LSA. Now this is a confusing name for this LSA because it does not actually mean a summary route, but we'll get to that later on. So the network summary LSA is generated by the area border routers to summarize inter-area information, but not in the traditional sense that you might think of. It's more like summarizing the information and not like summarizing several subnets into one route. Okay, but then number four, which is called the ASBR summary LSA. The creators of OSPF really like to use the word summary but uh, this one is used to advertise the presence of an autonomous system border router to other areas. So this LSA actually goes together with LSA number five, which is the AS external LSA. And this LSA is generated by the ASBR to advertise external redistributed routes into the OSPF domain. Now I'm going to jump over LSA type number six, and I'll explain why in a moment. But let's go to number seven first, which is the NSSA external LSA. And we still haven't discussed the OSPF area types, but this LSA is used for a special area type that does not allow external distributed routes, as they would normally be advertised in the type 5 LSA that I just described previously. Okay, these are the LSAs that we'll focus on. These are the quote-unquote important ones. But beyond that, you know, I told you I skipped over number six. 
And then there are also LSAs for like types 8 through 11. So we'll look at those briefly as well. So type number 6, which is also known as the group membership LSA, is used with multicast OSPF, which is not supported by Cisco. So I will not cover it here either. And then type number 8 LSA, the external attributes LSA, uh, were proposed as an alternative to running internal PGP to transport PGP information across an OSPF domain. But this LSA has never been deployed on a wide scale and it's not supported in iOS. And then type 9 through 11 is, are called opaque LSAs. And opaque LSAs are a class of LSAs that contain application-specific information. So the information field can be used directly by OSBF or indirectly by other applications to distribute information throughout the OSBF domain. And opaque LSAs have been used to add various extensions to OSPF, such as traffic engineering parameters for MPLM, MPLS networks. So let me just do that quickly here. Uh, six is the group membership LSA. I'm just writing them here for trivia. As I mentioned, uh, these are really the more important ones. And then eight is external attributes. And then nine through 11 is opaque LSAs. Okay, let me just get rid of that to make some more space here. So for all types of LSAs, there is a 20 byte header, which is represented on the diagram here. But before I cover the LSA header more specifically, I want to quickly introduce the four link types that are used in the router LSA. The terminology can get confusing because you have fields like the link state ID, link type, link ID, link data, and so on. So this information that I'm going to present next is specific to the router LSA, but I want to differentiate it from the link state ID in the LSA header. So the router LSA holds information of the router links, and each router link is defined as one of four types numbered one through four and the LSA includes the link ID field that identifies by the network number and mask the object that this link connects to and depending on the type the link ID has different meanings so let me write another table here so we'll do link type, then description, and link ID. So for link type number one, describes a point-to-point -point connection to another router. So point-to-point -point to another router. I need to shorten it a lot to fit everything in here. And then in the link ID, you would have the neighbor router ID. neighbor router ID and link type number two describes a connection to a transit network 
connection to transit uh, network and here the link id would be the ip address of the designated router so ip address of dr and then number three describes a connection to a stub network connection to stub network and the link id is the IP network slash subnet. And then finally, link type number four uh, describes a virtual link. Let me move that a little lower. Virtual link. And the link ID would be the neighbor's router ID. Okay, so don't worry about this too much now, but keep it in mind for future videos when we'll look at the LSAs in more detail. But now let's jump to the LSA header. Finally, that's what I've had here on the screen the entire time. So the first field is the LSA age field. And this is the time that has elapsed since the LSA was created. So it's the time in seconds. And this field actually has an important function in ensuring that the link state database stays up to date and uncorrupted. So LSAs are aged as they reside in the link state database. And if they reach a max age, which is one hour, let me just, let me see if I can fit that here, is one hour, 60 minutes. Yeah, so they are flushed uh, from the OSPF domain. And therefore, there must be a mechanism to prevent legitimate LSAs from reaching the max age value and being flushed. So this mechanism is the link state refresh. Now, every 30 minutes, known as the LS refresh time, the router that originated the LSA floods a new copy of the LSA with an incremented sequence number and an age of zero. And when the other routers receive the new LSA, they replace the old copy of the LSA and begin aging the new copy. So every 30 minutes, the router that originated the LSA is going to send another copy. And this process can be thought of as a keep alive for an LSA. And an additional benefit is that any LSAs that might have become corrupted in a router's link state database are replaced with a fresh copy of the legitimate LSA. Okay, so next up is the uh, LS type field. And the LSAs I covered before would be indicated here. This one. Now the link state ID field identifies the link. And this field depends on the LSA type, but it could be the router ID, the IP address, or the network of the link it represents here. 
And then the advertising router field is, of course, the router ID of the router who originated the LSA. Oh, let me do this. I'm running out of space here. So this could be something like 1.1.1.1 1 .1 for router 1, which we've seen in our previous videos. And the LS sequence number field is the sequence number used to detect old or duplicate LSA information. Right here. And the LSA checksum field contains the checksum of the LSA for data corruption protection. This one, nothing new here. And the length field is the length of the LSA, including the 20 byte header here. And as it says here, depending on the LS type, details of the contents will vary. So this part will be different for each LSA type. But now let's go back to our packet capture, still the same one from my previous videos. This one over here. So let's look at this link state update that I've opened here. So you can see that there are two LSA. So let's open LSA type number one, which is the router LSA. Now you can see here all the fields that we discussed. First, there's the LS age, which is 45 seconds. But notice here is something interesting. The do not age bit. So what is this? The do not age bit is set in on-demand circuits. An on-demand circuit is a type of link that is not up all the time, but only comes up when you need it and you're built for the usage. So that is why you don't want a routing protocol to keep the link up all the time. So the LSA refresh function, which we discussed earlier, is effectively disabled. And the do not age bit is also set with virtual links. That is because there could be several routers between the endpoints and they could use these on-demand circuits. So this is essentially a kind of safety mechanism, like better not send LSAs quote unquote unnecessarily rather than risk high billing costs. Okay, the options fields we've discussed in another video, so I won't go over them here again. And here is the LS type field, which describes this uh, router LSA, or it indicates that the type of this LSA is the router LSA, type number one. And here the link state ID is the router ID, 1.1.1.1. And it's the same with the advertising router, which of course contains the router ID. Here's the sequence number, the checksum and the length. And the remaining part here is specific to this LSA. But just to show you the difference between this field, let me open up the other LSA, the network LSA that was also present here. Okay, let's open this up. So let's scroll down a little bit. So see here, it's 10.0.0.3. But the advertising router is 3.3.3.3. And yeah, here again, you can see that the remaining part is different from the router LSA we looked at earlier. But again, we'll get to that in other videos. This was just a brief overview of the LSA types and the LSA header. So that's it for this video. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.